there's a real challenge in our modern world that used to be called the crusader mentality. It was the whole idea that once you came out of something, you immediately were antagonistic towards what you came out of. Like the alcoholic that becomes the ex-alcoholic suddenly goes on a crusade to fight alcohol. And uh, mothers against drunk drivers, you know, because they've gone through this traumatic experience now become involved in a advocacy group to stop drunk driving. So they start and become a part of Mothers Against Drunk Driving, that. And we call that the crusader mentality because in the crusades, the church at one time said, oh, hey, you know, we want to, we have all this land, you know, we're in Europe and we have all this land and monies. And now, you know, we want God's blessing. So we want to send armies to Jerusalem to take back the holy city for the church that we might invoke God's blessing upon ourselves. And by way of many crusades, and it was a total manipulation war, supposedly God was in it, and yet when you look at the crusades, when they went to Jerusalem, they not only killed the Muslims, or you would say the Arabs, or the, the empire that was there at the time. I'm kind of tired this morning. I can't think of the name. It's funny. It was on Suleiman, you know, but it was on tip of my tongue. But anyways, um, not only did the Crusades not accomplish what they went out to do, they killed everyone at that time, and they even did things that Christians would not do. They were killing in the name of God and acting like it was God's will. And a lot of times in Christianity, we find that same crusader mentality happening when people want to confront and create controversy as opposed to comfort his people. You see, Jesus came not to confront but and not to conform to the world, but rather to save the world. He came to cause people to desire him more than they would desire the ways of the world. Because on a temporary fix, there's a lot of things about the world that maybe seem wonderful. You could get, you know, feeling good for one night by getting drunk, but the next day you'll have the consequences. So Jesus knew that and that people would get caught up in addictions and all these other aspects of the flesh, that he came to bring a spiritual reality to our life, something that we would know that would cause us eternal peace. We would be in the world, but irregardless of the circumstances or even the sins we found ourselves in, we would have peace with God because we would find that salvation wasn't based upon our works, but it was upon the realization of a relationship with him that he would lead and guide us in. So in the world, there are people that once they get saved, it's like they have to go out and prove they're saved. And it's kind of a crusader mentality. They get this idea that they got to do it for God by condemning the world or condemning whatever it is that God might be working on them in their own life. Part of it is sometimes the whole idea that, you know, because there's sin, they've got to, you know, condemn every single other person, sometimes of the very sin that God sees in their own life. And they don't see it. You know, and that's kind of what the blindness happens, that if we don't allow a personal relationship with Jesus to be our guide so that he could show us in his word what he wants for us, how we ourselves, if we just interpret the word, might blind ourselves to our own sinfulness, then we trip up and we fall down because we make a religious methodology to our way of life that while that may protect us in some ways from some of the things that are worldly and ungodly, it really doesn't save us from self-deception because religiosity in a lot of ways is good. There's nothing wrong with religion and your own religion should guide you in a lot of ways, but your religion must take you to that platform 
or that plateau where finally you deal one-on-one -on -one with God when you're alone. Your religion can cause you to take time to be alone with God, but unless you're alone with God, you don't hear what he has to say. Your religion can take you to a place of understanding about God, but unless you talk to God, you'll never understand what he has to say to you. So religion is good if it's done up to a plateau place where the rest of it is relationship. So on the bottom, you have religion. But on top of that, you must add relationship so that the personal application of God speaking to you will determine what you do in your religion to make it a complete wholeness or holiness unto God. So, unfortunately, sometimes people take religion and leave out relationship and then they run after people and start crucifying sometimes the Christians that really are already saved. They start crucifying ideas or personal agendas that they have, but they don't realize it's a personal agenda. It's not what God told them to do. Sometimes you get people that are so wrapped up into politics, they forget they're Christian completely. They don't realize that political activism is a drug and it becomes an addiction that every six months and every year and then every two years and then every four years, you have to keep winding yourself up like a hamster to be oh so active because that's what activists are. They stay active. They're constantly on the run. Go, 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 go. And they can't stop. Be still. Seek the Lord. Listen. Wait. Those are some of the things how you can tell when Somebody is more of a crusader and crusade type mentalities because they always have to slash, crash, cause conflict, constantly out there telling people what's wrong, then blessing them with what's right. For me, I found that in my, my latter days, as I'm in the ministry now and sharing all that I've learned and accumulated in my life's experiences, I don't want to be around crusaders. You know, they, they put on their armor of God, which is to protect them, and then they go out and they think that they can joust with, say, Satan, or joust with angels, or joust with the world, and they think that they've got some kind of superpower inside them that now that they're crusaders for God, they uh, have the ability to go out and do things for God most of the time without God. You know, and shoot, what I learned at AI was that Joshua, you know, he he kind of learned his lesson, you know. He, he figured out that, you know what, when God leads the battle, he won. When he went by his own ideas, he compromised. And then at times when he even went so far as to not just compromise, when he, when he really thought he knew what he was doing and went and tried to fight, he got whipped. How's that for people that have God with them? God will allow you sometimes to fail so that you can learn to wait, trust, and obey Him and not your own ideas. So, in this world of conflict, people want to confront, confront and cause conflict so that they can create for themselves a feeling of righteousness. Because when you confront something, you think, ha! I showed them, when you cause conflict, your anger and your feelings will well up. And anger can be a powerful motivation. And there's a certain amount of anger that you could use in the right way. But if it's motivating you to confront and cause conflict, then anger is not a good motivation. In fact, it may cause you to do things and say things that you probably shouldn't have because you reacted in a hurry, guided by emotion, rather than devotion to God. And what I mean by that is that if you don't stop with your emotion, you can still be emotional, don't get me wrong, but you have to kind of compartmentalize the two. You have to have this emotion, whatever it is, it should be peace, love, and joy, obviously, that's fruit, but if it doesn't, you know, say you're angry, but then you have to kind of hold your anger right here, and then you have to go over here and say, uh, God, I'm angry, but let's be real. Even though I'm in my anger, what do you want me to do? And then God will tell you. Because you see, God might use your anger to keep that blood pumping, so to speak, but 
choose to channel it or choose to direct it in a positive way. Because it says that not the sun go down upon your wrath. Be angry, but sin not. So, in a lot of ways, it's not about just one aspect, like, oh, that is sin, and so we have to confront it. But it's about, did you ask God if he wants you to confront it? Because he may be doing something in that person's life that you're interfering with. You see, the religion part tells you it's sin, tells you to confront. But the relationship part tells you, let God tell you if he's doing something there that he wants you to remain silent and be still. It's a challenge because a lot of people have more religion than they do relationship. And, you know, it's going to sound weird, but sometimes having too much relationship isn't a bad thing. It might be a good thing. Perpetual guidance. Fullness of joy. The joy of perpetual guidance, the joy of knowing that every detail of your lives is planned by me, but planned with a wealth of tenderness and love. I love you, so I will watch over you. I care for you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Wait for guidance for every step, and in every step seek the Lord. Wait to be shown my way, not thy way. I thought of this loving leading should give you great joy. All the responsibility of life is taken off your shoulders because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Just do as I need you to do. All its business worry taken off your shoulders. It is indeed a joy for you to feel so free and yet so planned for intricately. Because even as detailed as I know every hair on your head, so too I know every step of your life. Oh, the wonder of this God-guided life, to think anything impossible in such circumstances is to say it cannot be done by me. How could anything be impossible if I am there? To say that is surely a denial of me. In all aspects of our life, God wants to demonstrate he's the living God. He is the reality check of our existence. He is what makes us and determines for us if we truly are his or if we are just saying that based upon a religious observation of certain rules and regulations that we define what a Christian is as opposed to what a Christian becomes, which is Christ-like. And the Christ-likeness can only be as we are in contact in personal relationship with Jesus. And so being in personal relationship means that we would talk to him about every move we make, every step we take. Because if we don't, then it's kind of a distant relationship. And some people have that. It's a far away thing. But God wants you to not have that distant relationship that might take for granted your salvation and go out on your way to be a crusader trying to conquer literally like Don Quixote windmills in your mind that really aren't issues, that have never been struggles, that have never been trials, that as a matter of fact, as far as God is concerned, are only windmills being blown by the wind, and as soon as the wind stops, the windmill quits turning, and he has no desire for you to chase after foolish windmills like Don Quixote and pretend that they're dragons. God has something better for you to not make a fool of yourself but rather to be used as one of those foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That though you may have been a fool and gone on your crusades like a Don Quixote, riding a donkey, thinking you're riding a steed and wielding some mighty sword of the word, you've actually been slashing and gnashing and gashing on Christians and some of your fellow brethren and wounding them in ways you never thought you would have. How sad it would be to see the day when Jesus said, look, here's what you were doing, but over here is what I wanted you to do. And this is what would have happened with joy unspeakable had you done it. The peace, the love, the joy ought to be your guide. What are you doing? If you don't have peace in your heart, love on your lips and joy in your eyes.
why are you doing what you're doing? If you're bitter and not better, why are you doing what God has not told you to do?